Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to go through Holden Resources Calculator Beta and give you an updated version on the tutorial that I made about six months ago. Let's get into it. So we're actually going to use exactly the same hand as I used in that tutorial six months ago. Uh, it's from the $11 Bounty Builder, 10 left. It was a hand that was posted in one of the Facebook groups that I'm in. And uh, what I've done here is hide hero's whole cards. Now, the reason why I've done that is because I don't want you to focus on what he has uh, and what he should do in this situation. I want you to focus more on what we can learn from the spot. You know, this is why we use the solvers. We don't just want to run it and say, okay, is this hand a call? Is it a fold? You know, what do we do with our exact hand? We want to learn sort of more about the spot, more about the range and the strategy. So uh, yeah, I definitely recommend hiding the whole cards in this spot. So hero goes for the open and big blind goes for uh, a jam. So as I mentioned, there are 10 players left here. Final table bubble, you can see hero, if he folds here, has 24 and a half bigs. Uh, you can see villain four there on nine and a half bigs, villain three on 26, and then villain one on uh, just under 12. And there's a whole other table of five players as well. So today's video then is gonna go through a Holden Resources Calculator, and I'm gonna walk you through every bit of the process, step by step, let's get into it. All right, so this is what you get when you first load HRC Beta. If you haven't downloaded the Beta yet, definitely grab that. This is different from uh, the, the original HRC. Uh, we're gonna do an advanced Monte Carlo hand, so you're just gonna click there, and this is what you get. Now you can see I've already put the prizes in from this tournament, uh, but you can see here that the stacks and the bounties are not in there. It is a, a PKO, as I mentioned, uh, I think I said $11 bounty builder on stars, uh, 10,000 players. So what we're gonna do, I've already copied the hand from Poker Tracker. I'm gonna click this button here and it's gonna paste the stacks in. Now, PokerStars does really well in the sense that the bounty values are included in the hand history. So when you paste the, the hand history in, you get all these bounties in here. If you're playing on other sites that don't do that in the hand history, maybe you're playing on a Party and GG where maybe the bounty info doesn't come across. I'm not 100% sure on that. Maybe they've updated recently, but uh, yeah, if it doesn't come across, you're going to have to enter the bounty amount manually. Uh, just remember that if you uh, look at this, the, the table at the time, it's going to give you the bounty amount that you can win most, most often. And what you need to do is double that amount when you're manually inputting that into uh, this table here. So you can see the blinds and the antis have come through as well. I, I mentioned before that I've already put in the, the prizes on the right hand side. Uh, if you don't have access to the lobby, really uh, cool hack here is to go to Sharkscope. You can actually search by the tournament ID and it'll bring up all of the prizes. Uh, so you can see we've only got 10 players left, so I've only filled it out for 10 players. Uh, but if you're playing, you know, you've got 100 left, you could do it for you know, 100 players left uh, and add all the prizes in here as well. Just be really careful that when you go through the prizes in Sharkscope, that you recognize that it does include um, the, the bounty amounts um, as well. So what you can do is take the, the prize minus the bounties and you'll get the uh, the prize. I, I mean, I, I would always recommend making sure that you've got a, a copy of the lobby. In all of these situations that come up, taking a screenshot is gonna be really, really useful. Right, let's move on down to this uh, this next part. You can see places paid 10, so we, you know, we only need to put in the 10 players that are left. And you can see the prizes in there. That's the remaining prizes uh, in this uh, in this tournament. And then we get to total chips. Now this is really important that you put this in correctly because it's gonna help HRC work out the average stack. Uh, so what I've done here is uh, take the starting stack, which is 5,000, multiplied by the number of players in the tournament, which was well over 10,000, and we get this number, which is uh, just under 53 million chips. The bounty mode then, we're gonna choose PKO. If you're just doing a normal tournament, not a PKO, then you can turn this off if you want to, uh, but we wanna have it on, on PKO. And uh, we've selected 50% here. You can change this number. There are some tournaments, I think, on stars where it's not 50% that you win. Um, but yeah, in the Bounty Builders it is, so we're gonna leave that on 50%. Next up then is the hand mode. We already, you know, we're already in advanced betting mode. There are five players left on the table. That's why I've included five players. If you are playing, you know, eight or nine handed, uh, you absolutely can change this number to eight or nine. But just remember that it's gonna affect the, the sim. Like that's obviously, it's working out what everyone else should do, uh, rather than thinking about how many players can actually be, you know, get involved in a preflop spot here. So um, yeah, just be be aware that if you put, you know, really high number in here, eight or nine, that the sim is gonna take a lot longer to run. Uh, the equity model then that we're gonna use is the multi-table one. Uh, this is for ICM where we're away from the final table. So, you know, there are two, two tables left here, 10 players, 
Uh, so we're going to use this one. If we're on the final table, we can just use this Malmuth Har uh, Harville ICM. If we just want, just want to work in Chip EV, then we're going to use this one. And then future game simulation, we could use this one. So we're going to use this multi-table ICM, and then we're going to click Next. Uh, so you can see we've got 10 players left. You've got the total number of chips. You've got the chip average. And uh, we can then click on this button here. And we want to change the number of players to, to 10 left. Now, this chip average is now going to change to just under 5.3 million. And I like to click Randomize and Auto Shape. Um, haven't done enough experimentation with these, uh, but that's just the way that I like to do it. Uh, and then what that's basically telling HRC is the sort of the distribution of uh, stacks and, and chips around the, uh, the other table. All right, so we're gonna click next. So here on this betting setup window then, this is where we're going to specify the betting structure as it says right at the top. We've included 2.1 big blinds and all in uh, to, uh, to be able to, to see what, what hero should be doing in this situation. But there are some short stacks in the, on the table as well. So we'll be able to see what they should be doing too. I think it's really important not just to focus on what you should do in this spot, but learn from what other players should do as well. There's a player, I think, in the cutoff who's a short stack. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, does he just jam every hand here? Does he have a min raising range? You know, what does that strategy look like for him with 10 left uh, and his his bounty? Uh, I've allowed flat calls and over calls. Uh, this is something new in the, in the beta where this is actually going to be a thing. In the original version of HRC, selecting these uh, did a really bad job, basically, uh, because it didn't have this uh, post-flop abstraction, sort of post-flop engine. It just assumed that the hand was going to get checked to showdown once pre-flop had ended. Uh, so once the you know, pre-flop decisions have been made, the hand just gets checked to showdown. And we know that in poker, that is very rare. You know, it's, it doesn't happen uh, too, too often. Then we get to three bet then. I've selected uh, the three bet size. So we could go three bet non all in. So seven bigs. You could change this to 6.5 if you wanted. Uh, I've just selected seven today. And uh, we've also gone for a jam because that's that's what happened. And I think that's uh, something that could definitely happen versus an open. Uh, given as well, the small blind is uh, is short, has like 12 big blinds. So we've got four bet all in and five bet all in as well. So before I take a look then at the post flop abstraction details, uh, there is this new feature called scripting. I'm not going to go through it in today's video, but I will go through it in a future video for sure. Uh, if that's something that you're really interested in, just to be sure for me that you definitely want to see this, then drop a comment down below on, on this. But basically what scripting does is it allows you to uh, set up the, the tree, uh, the game tree, uh, in a way that sort of almost overrides part of this this bet sizing setup so for example like if you're in the small blinds you're probably not going to want to just open to 2.1 bigs and, and jam uh, you might want to open to 2.5 or 3 so what you can do is actually customize the bet sizes by position as well so we'll go through that in, in a future video if that sounds like something you're really interested in then definitely drop a comment down below right now okay so post flop abstraction details then you definitely want to select post flop play here we want to select max players post flop 3 and um, when we get to bet sizing hints, I've experimented a bit with this uh, in my previous video. I just selected 75% uh, as the, you know, I just left it as the as the default. Uh, I think that given we're opening like roughly 25 big blinds effective, I think maybe having a smaller bet size in here could be could be quite useful. Um, I don't, um, yeah, I think you could probably still leave it to 75% because the program's going to work out the sort of the the number of sizes like max bets that need to be um, you know, used to get all in by the river. Um, but yeah, I've, I've given I've given some you know, small and small and big sizes. We could you know, definitely change this to 25 and 75 if you wanted to uh, as well. Uh, I've also allowed all in for for post flop, so we've got three bet sizes overall. The thing is with all of these numbers is they are going to affect the overall size of the tree. So the more sizes you go for, and the deeper the stacks, and the, the bigger the number of players on the table. Uh, the bigger the tree is going to get, and then the, that means the, the longer it is going to need to run for. When it comes to flop and turn, we're going to select 256 to begin with. You can change this later on, uh, but we're going to go for 256 uh, in the first instance. So before we hit the finish button then, it's really important to look at the total size of the tree. And you can see here it's 0 0.18 gigabytes. Now, the recommendation that I've received for, for this is that this is going to help us work out the number of samples we need to run this sim for. So Basically, we want to run it for 2,500 times the total size of the tree. So in my head, uh, I make that roughly 450. I think uh, 0.18 times 2,500 is 450. So that's a really important number. I'll explain more about that number in a bit. So now let's hit finish and get started with the sim. A few moments later. All right, so that's run for just uh, just 10 M. Uh, I do believe that the M stands for millions, so something like 10 million samples. Uh, we're going to do it for a lot more samples than that coming up. Uh, but this is this is what happens straight away. Now, 
one of the biggest mistakes I see is is uh, players or students just running running the first 10m and, and being done with it and going, okay, yeah, well, queen seven suited, yeah, that's in there, queen eight suited there, now that's going to be a fold, so on and so forth. The, the thing is that this sim just hasn't run for long enough, so you're going to get um, a lot of noise in here, which, uh, which is going to you know, look like some hands in here that are not profitable and, uh, yeah, all sorts of other, other nonsense like queen seven suited being open and queen eight suited not. So if we click then on the button opening range here and then click on this little arrow, it's going to give us all of the responses to this open. Uh, I don't think the small blind is going to ever three bet to seven bigs uh, when they only have 12.2 bigs back. So in the first video, I said what you could do is double click on here and you could just uh, take this uh, range percent all the way down uh, to zero percent. But actually, you don't need to do that anymore because you can actually just right click and click prune action control and D. Uh, on the keyboard uh, and you can see that just instantly removes uh, removes that as well um, we don't need to to know what the small blind is going to do so i'm actually going to do Control d on uh, the small blind as well so what i'm doing here is just making the tree smaller for things that uh, either don't happen or uh, don't affect the sim now i could delete parts of this game tree as well but that will affect the button opening range and that's what i was talking about a little bit earlier on when it comes to card removal we we do want to leave these in so don't make the mistake of removing these really important branches because these have an effect on the button opening range uh, in this spot. So I mentioned before, we're gonna run this now for a lot more samples. I'm gonna click this button up here that says run Nash calculation. You can use Alt R on the keyboard if you want. We're gonna make sure the update entire game tree is selected. Now, given that I've pruned some of the trees, uh, I'm gonna make sure that I click reset regret um, or reset regret. Yeah, just make sure you always do this when you have pruned the game tree or if you've locked some uh, some of the ranges. Now, I mentioned before that our key number was 450. Remember that 2,500 times the size of the game tree. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to half that number. Uh, you can actually only go to 220 or 240. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, for the first half, we're going to do half the number of samples, 220M. So let's just use the number 440. I know we're looking for 450. Uh, I'm going to do the decay set to 1E. Uh, minus six and then you're going to click uh, OK. I'm not going to run it now uh, because my computer is going to sound like it's about to take off and nobody wants to listen to that but the key thing is then you're going to click OK and it's going to start running. Now what you can do is then sort of um, queue up the next part of the solve so that you can go off and make a cup of coffee so you don't have to wait for it to finish to then do this next part. Uh, so what you would do is, is click on this uh, the sort of the, the white arrow on the green circle once again. You still want to be doing up uh, the whole game tree, so updating the entire game tree. Uh, but we don't want to uh, reset regret this time. But we do want to reset the strategies. We're going to keep the samples the same because remember we did the first half uh, before, 220. And now we're going to take the decay 2 off. I'm going to click OK. And that's just going to queue it up so that the sim can can finish. Um, and yeah, as I said, you can go off and, uh, and get yourself a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you like to drink. Okay, so here's the sim then that I did run earlier in typical Blue Peter fashion. And what we've got now is a lot less noise. Uh, a lot of, you know, there's no hands outside of this range that we wouldn't expect um, to, to see in there. So we're not gonna suddenly like a 10-3 suited opening, but not a 10-5 suited, for example. Now this is, uh, yeah, reasonably useful, I think, to, to view it like this, but there is a much better way to view this range. And that's one of the sort of the newer features of HRC is you can now go through here. So we can look at the range of hands. So you can see the hands that we open 100% of the time and hands like queen four suited or seven five suited, six five suited, jack nine off that we open less than 100% of the time. Uh, you can also select the full range display and you can see where uh, we open to the 2.1 bigs and where we jam. Now you can see there's no jams in this situation, but if we went to the cutoff, for example, uh, we can see the hands in the sort of pinky salmony color uh, are going to jam and the hands in this purple color are going to go for the 2.1x raise. I really like this feature because it just allows you to visualize what you should do with different parts of your range and you can also start to understand the, this idea of uh, sort of polarized and condensed ranges. So the uh, the min raising range is very polarized. You're going to raise call with the top of your range. You're going to raise fold the bottom and everything else in the middle is going to go for a jam. So then if we click on this arrow next to the button, we can then click on the big blinds strategy and we can see uh, what that looks like. So you can see the hands in purple are gonna go for a call, the hands in pinky color are gonna go for a three bet and the hands in green are gonna go for uh, a jam. So as I click through all of these actions from call to three bet to jam, you can see that the, the ranges and the strategies all stay the same. It just depends what you've clicked on as to what gets highlighted. Uh, but you can see, for example, if we click on jam here, 
that all of the hands in purple are the hands that call. Just because it says 0% doesn't mean that it you know doesn't ever call. Uh, what it means is that it just doesn't jam in this spot because we've clicked on the jam action. So in our hand then, the big blind did jam. So we wanna see what our response looks like. And you can see we call with sevens plus, ace jack off, ace 10 suited, and then king queen suited and ace 10 off are lower frequency calls. Let's look at the EV because that's probably gonna be more important in this spot. So now we can see king queen suited is uh, yeah pretty much break even. Ace 10 off is is actually uh, actually losing us some some money. That seems to suggest that we maybe haven't run the sim for long enough if it's still suggesting making calls with hands that aren't profitable. Um, one thing I just want to add is I did run it for the 220 and then reset strategies did the holes uh, took the decay off, ran it for another 220. And then what I did, uh, something you might want to do as well, is because we want to make sure that the card removal effect is, is working, so we want to make sure the hijacks and, and cutoffs ranges are you know, affecting our range, what we do then is you click on the button and you can cl uh, click to run again, but we're actually going to do update selected subtree instead. And uh, yeah, you can run it for as many samples as you want. Um, I know some people run it for you know a thousand samples and what they might do is do 500 samples at, uh, with the decay on and then 500 samples with the decay off but remembering to, to click the reset strategies here remember also that you don't need to click reset regret unless you have pruned part of the tree or you have added your own ranges uh, and by adding ranges i mean editing the ranges uh, by you know double clicking and, and changing these ranges to whatever you want it to be all right, so as I was going through this, you probably noticed the tool tips that, that pop up. I think it's a really nice addition because rather than having to click on a range to see what it looks like, so we just go here um, to see what it looks like, then you can just hover over the range instead and it just pops up so you can just visualize uh, those ranges. So I think it's a really nice feature, uh, something that is, uh, yeah, really nice addition. The next thing then that I want to go through is something that I've been crying out for, for ages and that's the ability to save hands. Uh, you can actually do that now in this version. So you just click this uh, floppy disk icon and you can save the, the sims so you can pull them up at a future date. So for someone like me that wants to use these sims in coaching sessions and in webinars, it's, uh, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, but maybe, you know, you're doing your own study sessions and you want to share some hands with friends or you want to be able to pull it up the next day and you want to, you know, you want to be able to turn your computer off and then come back the next day and, sh and load the sim. Well, you can absolutely do that now. Uh, which is you know, another great addition to HRC, in my opinion. So the final thing then I wanted to go through, is if you click on hands, you can actually click this thing called show bubble factors. If you're learning about ICM and bubble factors and risk premium and working all of that out, and you wanna see um, what sort of effect the stack size is and the stage of the tournament has on that, I think this is just really, really nice. I'm not sure if this was in the original version or not, but it's something I've been using recently, and I think it's really, really cool as well. So I think that's it for now. As I mentioned before, we are gonna go through scripting in a future video. Uh, I'm also gonna show you how to increase the memory uh, for HRC, because I think the default is something like four gigabytes, but if you've got a lot more memory than that and you start making bigger trees, then you're gonna to want to increase the memory uh, so that HRC has access access to more of it. So uh, I'll show you how to do that as well. If there's anything that you think I've missed, or there's something that you're still struggling with, then definitely drop a comment down below, ask a question, ask away, far away, and I will do my best to answer it either in the comments or I will make another video about it. So we're gonna wrap things up there. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button and the notification icon as well. I'm gonna be back soon with a brand new video, but until then, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.